Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Isn't it great to be here today? So, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, after the difficulties of the past two years brought about by the COVID pandemic and the EU exit, it's wonderful to welcome so many of you here back to the brewery for this fantastic event, the BIFA Freight Service Awards Ceremony. <laughs> Two years ago, we were lucky enough to gather to celebrate the 31st year of the BIFA Awards prior to the national lockdowns. Last January, the winners were announced online in a series of video releases. releases. But today, we are all delighted to be able to celebrate the 33rd BIFA Freight Service Awards in person once again. Those of you who have attended before will remember me. I'm Paul Craycraft, your Toastmaster for today. But now, please welcome BIFA Director General Robert Keane to the stage. Thank you, Paul. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's been a long two years since I stood here, um, but as usual, my speech will be really short, and it's a case of thanking you on behalf of the BIFA Secretariat and the BIFA Directors for all attending and supporting. As always, we're very grateful to our sponsors who support us, and Paul will run through the sponsors in just a few minutes, and their names will be flashed on the screen all the way through lunch. Um, our industry sector has been in the spotlight during the COVID pandemic and has performed some amazing tasks. And at BIFA, we've really enjoyed supporting our members with the multiple challenges that EU exit and other issues have raised. We continue to thrive. Our membership's at an all-time high. Our training activity continues to expand. We train more people than ever in the past year. Our apprenticeship continues to bring young talent into the industry and we're starting to engage with schools and colleges to promote freight forwarding as a worthwhile career. So again, thank you for coming. Can I just remind everybody, um, there will not be handshakes on the stage. Uh, can you minimise crowding at the end when people tend to come to the stage? Otherwise, in that, otherwise sorry, enjoy the day. I'm sure you can have a good time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert. So before we welcome the finalists to the stage to collect their certificates, let's please take a moment to thank the returning sponsors for supporting the event once again and welcome new sponsors. The 2021 award categories have been sponsored by Albacore Systems, American Airlines Cargo, Boxtop Technologies, Descartes Systems, IAG Cargo, and a new sponsor, Newage Software and Solutions, Peter Lowell Insurance Brokers, Port Express, SeaTech Outsource, TT Club, and Virgin Atlantic Cargo. And those sponsoring elements of today's ceremony are ASM UK Limited, CNS, Forward Solutions, MCP PLC, Simpex Express Freight and Woodland Group. So now, please welcome to the stage FIFA President Sir Peter Bottomley. You might think that having a politician in a brewery would lead to a social gathering, but you're, you're all welcome. And can I say to all those who become award winners, when you're standing in a line for a photograph, I will whisper quietly, say, nice camera. 
It'll stop you looking British, frowning. Stop looking American, teeth. It'll make you look normal. So just when you're ready, look at the camera and just say, nice camera, all right? That's my tip. My second tip is that at this work gathering, We're here to recognize excellence, but also to recognize what BIFA and its staff at Redfern House do for all the members. And if you think you're just in a sector by itself, you're not. All the talk now is about supply constraints, whether inflation is going to go up because of that. You're the people who do, if I can use what must be a well-known um, metaphor analogy for, for Matt Dawson, uh, it's getting things done calmly, effectively, the delivery, and then someone else can take the kick and score the goal. Is that right? Is that a fair summary? When, when, <laughs> when, when, when my wife opened the first International Rugby Museum at Twickenham, they saw her looking at a photograph on the wall, and they said, do you know who that is? She said, yes. They seemed a bit surprised. She said, it's my great uncle, a man called Ronnie Poulton Palmer, who was England's captain between 1913-1914, took us to a Grand Slam, and having scored four tries against France, was asked, how are you such a good attacking wing three-quarter? And his simple answer was, I have two elder sisters. <laughs> and one of the great things about this awards ceremony, compared with the first one, is the number of women involved has risen dramatically. And I would say to everyone who has a young person with ambition and talent, Think of putting them, male or female, into a, an apprenticeship, take the training, and make sure they go on with the continuous training which Biffa provides through its e-learning. And in thanking the Director General and all his colleagues, I want to say that on behalf of those who aren't here, congratulations and thank you for all you do. The difficulties of COVID, the difficulties of the separation of the EU are well known to you all, and if you don't know what they are, just read the Biffa magazine more carefully. Uh, as you come to CDS and know the differences from Chief, the same thing will happen. And as I come to a conclusion, and thanking Paul Craycraft, the Master of Ceremonies, on whom we rely all the time, can I say we can look with affection to the past, we can look with admiration to the present, but let's make sure we can look with confidence to the future. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Peter. Now, before lunch is served, I would invite you to welcome your host and special guest for the day to the stage to present the certificates to the finalists in each category. Please welcome Matt Dawson, MBE. The finalist certificates have been sponsored by MCP PLC and recognise those companies and individuals shortlisted in each of the 11 categories of the BIFA Freight Service Awards 2021. We start with the finalist in the three modal categories. First, the Air Cargo Services Award sponsored by IAG and the finalists are Kerry Logistics, <laughs> Mortar Court, Global Logistics. <laughs> Pentagon Freight. And Uniserve Group. Oh, On the end, Sir Peter. Next, we have the European Logistics Award, sponsored by TT Club. And the finalists are Espace Europe Limited, <laughs> Killit Martin and Company, Simarco Worldwide Logistics, and Unsworth UK.
Now we have the Ocean Services Award, sponsored by Port Express. Please welcome All Seas Global Logistics. NNR Global Logistics and Vicstar. Now we focused on the shortlists for the two specialist categories, beginning with the Cool and Special Cargoes Award, sponsored by American Airlines Cargo. In the running are Evolution Forwarding Limited, JCS Livestock, and United Worldwide Logistics. The second specialist category is the Extra Mile Award, sponsored by Descartes Systems. Please show your support for Evolution Forwarding Limited, Hemisphere Freight Services Limited, Pentagon Freight Services PLC, and Unsworth UK. Halfway there, ladies and gentlemen. And we turn our attention to the young and upcoming individuals of the industry with the Apprentice of the Year Award sponsored by CTEC Outsource. The five finalists are Joshua Boswell, Geodis Freight Forwarding. Herbie Cobby, Geodis Freight Forwarding. Matt Vick, John Good Logistics, Bobby Lowe, NVO Consolidation, and Thomas Lowe, OIA Global. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The second award recognizing individuals in the Young Freight Forward of the Year, sponsored by Virgin Atlantic Cargo. And the finalists are Ronan Kitchen of Aramex UK, Milos Bogovic, Zen Cargo, Laura Hobby, F.S. McKenzie. Corey Chambers, Ital Logistics, and Jamie Halliday, Tudor International Freight.
And now, shh, and now to the general categories, beginning with the Project Forwarding Award, sponsored by Peter Lowell Insurance Brokers. And the finalists are ACE Forwarding Limited, Astra UK Limited, LV Logistics, and Ucargo LLP. Up next is the Specialist Services Award, sponsored by Newage Software and Solutions. Please welcome B&H Worldwide Limited, Cargo Overseas Limited, Kerry Logistics Limited, and Your Special Delivery Service Limited. The Staff Development Award is sponsored by Albacore Systems. The finalists this year are Aramex Limited, Espas Europe Limited, Reliable Shipping Limited, and Unsworth UK. And the final group to receive their certificates are the finalists in the Supply Chain Management Award, sponsored by Boxtop Technologies. Please welcome Brunel European, Hemisphere Freight Services Limited, Noatum Logistics UK Limited, and Uniserve Group. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to join BIFA and members of the sponsor judging panel in congratulating the companies and individuals recognized here today. May I now invite Caroline Barber, Chief Executive of TransAid to the stage. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to be back here today and want to say a very big thank you to the BIFA team for all their continued support to TransAid. TransAid is an international development organization which transforms lives through providing safe, available, and sustainable transport. It really is a pleasure to be here today in the company of so many of TransAid's corporate supporters, ambassadors, and friends. 
And I would like to extend my personal congratulations to all of the finalists for the prestigious FIFA Freight Service Awards. This slide behind me shows all of our corporate partners, and I can certainly see some of you in the room here today. It's been a really difficult last couple of years for all of us. At TransAid, all of our income streams have been affected, and yet the need for our work has never been more urgent. However, I am very proud that TransAid's work has continued, and that really is testament to our remarkable partners in the UK and in the countries where we work. For the last 18 months, we've been very busy training drivers and trainers in Uganda, Zambia and Ghana. We've also implemented a COVID-19 and road safety response to support long distance drivers at high risk. We've been supporting the supply chain workforce in Zambia, working with UNICEF and the FIA Foundation to strengthen the supply chain down to the last mile and make sure essential health commodities get to rural communities. In September last year, we commenced a new project to provide access to fast, quality COVID-19 screening for truck drivers at border crossings in Uganda. We're raising awareness of COVID-19, targeting drivers, transport managers, and transport associations with information to also help support vaccine uptake and tackle vaccine hesitancy. Speaking with the team last Friday, the borders at the moment, Busia and Malaba, between Uganda and Kenya, we have tailbacks of 81 kilometers. We really, really need to get to work. Right now, these cross-border HGV drivers cannot equitably or affordably access fast and reliable testing. And this can lead to the rapid spread of, of COVID-19 among drivers and the communities they're interacting with. So we've partnered with FIND, the Global Alliance for Diagnostics, which seeks to ensure equitable access to reliable diagnosis around the world, as well as the Ministry of Health in Uganda to deliver this work together. At TransAid, we firmly believe that a global pandemic requires global solutions and equitable access to them. Our other access to health work continues at pace and has never been more needed as many of the public health gains, for example, in maternal, or malaria, in maternal health or malaria, achieved in the last decade have been lost due to COVID-19. Your support has helped TransAid and our partners to provide emergency transport solutions in Madagascar and in Zambia. 12,000 pregnant women and children have used these transport systems in the last year alone. For those of you who were here two years ago, you may remember that I spoke about a new programme that TransAid had started in Zambia called Mamas Against Malaria, and indeed we've had incredible support from the industry for this particular programme. Every single minute a child dies of malaria. It's completely unacceptable, and we're working hard to change that. Our pilot project exceeded our expectations, recording a 96% reduction in children dying of severe, mal severe malaria. And since then, we've been working around the clock to train community-based volunteers, to set up emergency transport systems, and ensure that medicines are available when they are critically needed. Our incredible team in Zambia have now reached 1 million people with our integrated severe malaria and COVID-19 response, Mammoth Scale. And the industry in the UK has played such a key part in making this scale up possible. I'm incredibly proud to share with you that in the Mammoth Scale districts, since August 2020, not a single child has died of severe malaria. Our Endline Statistical Survey, completed just before Christmas, helped to quantify the lives saved by this programme. And what really touches me is that behind every single number, there is a young child who is here today with their family or in school or playing with their brothers and sisters simply because they had access to transport and medicines when they needed it most. Just take the chance to introduce you on the slide behind me to Ines and Shadrick. Ines was the very first child in Zambia to receive a new medicine, a new drug called RAS that TransAid helped introduce with the Ministry of Health that is proving so effective in, in fighting um, severe malaria in rural communities. Excuse me. On the right is Shadrick. Shadrick was also given RAS by trained volunteers 
when he contracted severe malaria and was taken to a health facility by bicycle ambulance. Left untreated, severe malaria is fatal. The outcomes would have been so very different for Ines and Shadrick, who were both so young when they contracted severe malaria, and many, a few years ago when I had the privilege to meet them. You, you can see from these photographs here, where they're standing with Brenda, a community facilitator, and Rebecca, a community health volunteer and emergency transport rider, how very well they look now. And I'm sure you will agree with me that Shadrick is looking exceptionally smart in his suit there. Our, our approaches are evidence-based. They are simple and they are sustainable. Most importantly, they save lives and they are only possible thanks to your generosity. One way in which you can help support TransAid's life-saving work today is by taking part in our raffle, which will be drawn after lunch. There are some fantastic prizes up for grabs, a one-day cookery course at Rick Stein's Cookery School, a triple supercar thrill experience, a classic golf day for two at Formby Hall Golf Resort and Spa, and a one-day Scottish break with dinner for two at the four-star Talmahoy Hotel and Country Club in Edinburgh. Um, so special thanks to our prize donors, Woodland Group, FIFA, the London Freight Club and Hedford Group for your generosity with these prizes. Transaid donation envelopes are on each table and we'd kindly suggest a donation of £10 which you can use making cash, text or contactless payments. Um, I'm sitting on table two if anyone would like to find out more about the work that we do and Transaid's um, representatives are also here today. Thank you so much for all of your support. Thank you for giving me the time to share our updates today. We're so very grateful for all that you do for TransAid and for the communities that you help us to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Caroline. As corporate sponsors of TransAid, FIFA is delighted to share your achievements here today. And we wish you a successful 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, Shh. Please welcome again your event host, Matt Dawson. We are going to get in. Are we going to get into some awards? Should we get into some awards? Should we get into some awards? Right. Now, as I said before, as I said before, um, Let's create that little bit of a buzz. I've got, well, let's have, let's have a look. I bet it's about three o'clock, isn't it? All right, it's three o'clock. I want so much energy in this room. I know you've got it in you because most of you are going to be on the lash till at least midnight, right? So I want to make the most of the energy that you have now, opposed to doing this at dinner, uh, this dinner usually at 11 o'clock when you're all absolutely knackered. Uh, so, we, I'm going to, I will go, um, this is where I'm going to sound like I know something about freight, just so we're clear. There are 11 sponsors trophies, all right, only 11, so we've got to ramp it up in the room 11 times, I'm sure we can do that. Uh, for the FIFA Freight Services Award 2021, how does that sound? Good. Now... Now, it says here, in true Oscar style, right, the sponsor of each category. I don't know who's seen the spot Oscars. I've never seen a sponsor go onto the stage at the Oscars. The sponsor of each category will now join me on stage to announce the trophy winner, the representative of the winning company. I, I mention the representative, not all of the representatives. This is not an opportunity for the whole company to come up and have a party up here, maybe afterwards. Uh, the representative of the winning company is invited to collect their trophy from my good self, uh, and then, it's, again, um, make, make your way off the stage as quickly as possible. No, it doesn't. It says, make, make your way to the stage as quickly as possible when we announce the winners We'll give you the award. We're going to have a lovely photo here, a great opportunity to celebrate your amazing achievements. Uh, OK, we're going to start the award ceremony today by announcing the winners of the modal... Haven't got a clue what that means. 
the modal categories of the competition. The first category in this group is the Air Cargo Services Award, I would like to call uh, upon Daniel Byrne from sponsor IAG Cargo to join me on stage to announce the winner. Come on, Daniel. Where are you, Daniel? Here he is. That's great. Thanks for joining us, Daniel. The global response to the COVID-19 pandemic threw existing air cargo operations into total chaos in 2020-21. The sponsor, IAG Cargo, wanted to hear your case studies involving the movement of goods by air and the challenges that had to be overcome to get the shipment to destination. So, the four finalists for the Air Cargo Services Award are Kerry Logistics, Woo -hoo -hoo! Malta Court, Pentagon, and Uniserve Group. And it's over to you, Daniel. And the winner, and the winner is Kerry Logistics. And here they come. In a very tough and competitive field, the Kerry Logistics entry stood out for the sheer volume of kilos moved and the wide variety of aircraft utilized. Over one million kilos moved from Asia to the UK, supporting the healthcare sector with vital PPE and UK industries with manufacturing goods in the toughest supply chain environment. From Antonovs to 777s, with the seats removed, solutions were found. Many congratulations. American, many congratulations, Kerry Logistics. And thank you, Daniel, for making such an effort with your attire this evening. Um, I mean, it really did sort of kick off the first award and uh, the seriousness and what it means to Kerry Logistics to pick up that award from a school child. Right, step up your game, please, sponsors. Goodness me. All right. Okay, shh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Watch the next sponsor is properly going to be crapping themselves, all right? Watch them. I guarantee it, guarantee it. Now, on to the second modal category. The European Logistics Award, I would like to invite, look out, Michael Yarwood. Uh, I would like to invite Michael Yarwood from Sponsors TT Club to come on stage and announce this year's winner. Oh, look at Michael over here. Look at Michael. Look at now that's class. The European Logistics Award, sponsored by TT Club, is aimed at those companies using road, short sea or rail services to provide logistic solutions to and from Europe. With the changes brought about by EU Exit, the judges were looking to understand what companies have done to ensure continuation of service and customer compliance with new procedures. And so, the four finalists for the European Logistics Award are... Espers European! Killing Martin and Company. Sir Marco Worldwide Logistics. And Unsworth UK. Over to you, Michael. Thank you very much. And the winner is Killick Martin and Company. It's a long way to the stage, but it's a worthwhile journey. Killick Martin. They demonstrated expertise to meet new logistical challenges for a key customer. Realising great benefit for their customer and themselves, Killick Martin introduced a Hypercare 24-7 service that afforded their customer the support they required to continue shipping goods across Europe in the face of multiple challenges. Killick Martin!
Uh, he, he did assure me that was as quick as he could. <laughs> so, not for me to comment there. Okay, now uh, on to the Ocean Services Award. Uh, I would like to ask Adam Dawson, a fine, upstanding individual, from Sponsors Port Express to join me on stage for the announcement of the winner. Look at the style of this guy, eh? Woo! 2020-21 was a difficult period for ocean freight, with schedules and equipment availability impacted by many factors. The category sponsor, Port Express, was interested to learn how forwarders managed customer expectation and mitigated problems whilst using ocean services either as a standalone service or as part of a multimodal shipment. And so the finalists for the Ocean Services Award are All Seas Global Logistics, NNR Global Logistics, and Vicstar. Over to you, Adam. And the winner it is All Seas Global Logistics. They're justifiably over the moon with this. The proactive action, along with significant investment, led to all seas being able to offer an alternative solution to the failing market norm. Many congratulations. I recognise. Anyone else recognise him? <laughs> didn't, he, didn't he present the Crystal Maze in the 90s, wasn't it? <laughs> was it? Right. And now on to uh, specialist categories, beginning with the Cool and Special Cargoes Award. Uh, please could I ask Jason Alderton of sponsor American Airlines Cargo onto the stage, please. Thank you, sir. The Cool and Special Cargoes Award, sponsored by American Airlines Cargo, is for members organizing specialist cargo and refrigerated freight services, where specific arrangements are required to ensure the smooth and timely delivery. Shipments may range from small high-value farmer products through to a large reefer container, livestock transportation, or heritage goods by any mode of transport. The finalists for the Cool and Special Cargoes Award are Evolution Forwarding Limited, JCS Livestock and United Worldwide Logistics. Uh, the winner is JCS Livestock. I can tell you the judges have a lot to say about JCS Livestock. The submission from them ticked all the boxes in this category for cool and special cargoes, detailing the relocation of a colony of 14 Humboldt penguins from the Isle of Man to Northern Ireland to continue the breeding efforts of this rare and endangered species. Aside from the usual requirements for the movement of live animals, they excel. Okay, we are flying through it. Only another 45 awards to go, so just bear with me. Uh, yeah, come on, we're on number five or 11. We are plowing through onto the second specialist category, the Extra Mile Award. Please, could I ask uh, Simon Heath of Sponsors Descartes to join me on the stage. Simon, where are you? There you are, thank you very much. The Extra Mile Award, sponsored by Descartes, is targeted to companies that can provide specific examples of innovation or customer care by adding value and exceeding their customers' expectations in relation to international shipments by any mode of transport. Here we go, the four finalists for the Extra Mile Award are Evolution Forwarding Limited, Hemisphere Freight Services Limited, Pentagon, and Unsworth UK. Simon. Okay, and the winner of the Going the Extra Mile Award, which I hope we all do, is the Hemisphere Freight Services. Just watch. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. 
strategically positioned near the stage. That's a good move. The panel decided that by adapting and extending the services that they could provide in combination with the way that they addressed the very specific challenges in 2020 with COVID, sewers and global shipping delays and reduced capacity, Hemisphere Freight demonstrated they've gone the extra mile to support their customer in delivering a critical infrastructure project. Congratulations! Hey. Yes. He's not getting past six o'clock, is he, that fella? What's the, what's the spread? What's the spread? Is it six? Seven at a push. Go on, my son. Go on. Nailed it. He did nail it. He nailed that. Nailed it. Yeah. Look out. Anyone from table eight? All right, I personally would avoid. It's carnage on there. But many congratulations, well done, well done indeed. Okay, we are uh, halfway point-ish, aren't we? Uh, we're going to move away briefly from the company awards and onto uh, two individual awards, and very important awards they are too. The first individual category is the Apprentice of the Year Award. Uh, it was first, yes, indeed. Um, and great that it's been, it's been going for the last three years. Um, today's winner is going to receive one a thousand pounds. All right, uh, that you have to spend at the bar today. Uh, no, you don't. No, you don't. No. And the runners up. I'm going, to, I'm going to also receive 250 quid. All right. <laughs> Bonus. Uh, I would love to ask uh, Karen Palfreman of SeaTech Outsource to join me on stage, who's going to announce the winner. FIFA members employing apprentices were invited to nominate individuals for this award. The judges were looking for entries that showcased the difference the named apprentice made for the organization. Having shortlisted finalists that showed the inspirational qualities, commitment and personal development and an outstanding contribution to their employer, the judges interviewed each apprentice before making their final decision. So please give a massive round of applause for each of these five finalists for the Apprentice of the Year Award. They are Joshua Boswell of Geodis Freight Forwarding. Happy Kobe of Geodis Freight Forwarding. Matt Vick of John Good Logistics. Bobby Lowe of NVO Consolidation. And Thomas Lowe of OIA Global. Brilliant. Karen, over to you. Here we go, Karen. And the winner is Herbie Cobby. <laughs> An interview, Herbie demonstrated an incredible attitude with mature answers to the questions posed and a very well-researched presentation brilliantly put together. Herbie's already having an impact on future apprentices and recognises that completing the apprenticeship aided his development to a confident young man who knows his direction of travel. Congratulations, Herbie. And the competition for this category was extremely tight, and therefore the sponsor would also like to acknowledge Matt Vick with a special recognition. Matt, please make your way to the stage to collect your trophy. Where are you, Matt? Here he comes. He's got a long way to go as well. It's not fair, is it? It's like a table slalom to the stage. But I can tell you that the judging panel were impressed by Matt's mature attitude to work and the completion of his apprenticeship as well. He's shown that he's driven and has the confidence to take on new challenges. Matt made an excellent presentation showing an outstanding future of the industry, global markets and political influence. Congratulations. Take note, Daniel, that is how to dress for an awards ceremony. <laughs> okay, 
the second award for individuals in this Young Freight uh, is the Young Freight Forwarder of the Year Award. Today's winner will receive prize money of £1,250. <laughs> what a party those two could have tonight. And the four runners up are going to receive 300 quid each as well. So, absolutely awesome. Uh, the winner will then go on to take part in the International Young Logistics Professional Competition this spring. Uh, please, could I ask Joe Ellis of Virgin Atlantic Cargo to come onto stage and announce the winner. The Young Freight Forwarder Award, sponsored by Virgin Atlantic Cargo, recognises the work and achievement of people under the age of 32 in the freight forwarding industry. Entrants had to present their career achievements to date and outline their future ambitions. Additionally, they had to submit an article on why they believe that they deserve to win the award. And this was supported by a manager's reference. And so please, once again, go crazy as I read out the finalists for the Young Freight Ford Award. They are Ronan Kitchen of Aramex UK. Milos Bogovats of Zen Cargo. Laura Hobby of FS McKenzie. Corey Chambers of Ital Logistics. And Jamie Halliday of Tudor International Freight. Over to you, Joe. Come on, Joe. And the winner is Laura Hobby. Yeah. <laughs> Well done, Laura. The judges were impressed by the way that Laura demonstrated clear commercial awareness in a sales role, articulating commercial benefits to success that she has had to date. Laura is clearly a hard-working individual, demonstrated by her personal development in completing a degree while delivering multiple projects for the business. The passion for the industry was incredible to see and shone through most notably in her knowledge of FIFA and in taking annual leave to talk to local schools. That's dedication. And that's not all. Because once again, competition for this category was so tight that the sponsor would also like to acknowledge Corey Chambers. With a special recognition, Corey, please make your way to the stage to collect your trophy. And as Corey heads to the stage, Corey should be highlighted for special recognition for his humble beginnings in the industry, to taking on personal development to deliver incredible achievements for his business. Another candidate that demonstrated commercial awareness and has clear ambitions to progress further within the industry. None more so than delivering 25% year-on-year growth. Well done, Corey and Laura. Awesome, awesome. And uh, Laura loved the speed to the stage there. Pretty much breaking into a sprint to get her award. Great commitment. Um, okay, we're now moving on to presenting trophies to the winners in the four general categories. The first one being project forwarding. Anybody know what that is? Everybody in the room, by okay, give me one sentence, please, sir, what project forwarding is. Something unusual that gets to a destination. Right. That, my friend, is why you're on the top table right there. Right, here we go. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, get Ben Butler, uh, a sponsor, Peter Lowell, from Insurance Brokers, Peter Lowell, uh, to come onto the stage. He's going to be handing out the winners. Hello, Ben. The successful handling of major handing project winners, shipments something. requires much planning and a multidisciplinary team. In this category, sponsored by Peter Lowell Insurance Brokers, BIFA invited case studies from members that have completed an out-of-gauge project or coordinated a complex movement that has reached a conclusion in the past 12 months. The four finalists for Project Forwarding Award are 
Ace Forwarding Limited. Astra UK Limited. LV Logistics. And Ucargo LLP. Ben, open that envelope. Go on, Ben. Congratulations to the winner, Ace Fording. A frontier and remote drilling project off the southwest coast of Ireland for CMOOL International was a complex project and required an innovative approach requiring negotiation with the Irish Revenue to set up a new customs regime. Dedicated staff took up secondment positions to set up handling processes and to provide training and support at both Kerry Airport and Poinsport. The project involved charters and a whole lot of problems and they resolved each and every one of them. Congratulations! Okay, swiftly on to the uh, second award in uh, this category, and that's for Specialist Services Award. Uh, to announce the winner, please welcome Douglas Anderson from Newage Software and Solutions. The services offered by a modern freight forwarder extend far beyond the provision of basics, transportation and documentation. The category is for value-added services that enhance the customer experience, enabling them to concentrate on their core business. Such services need not be modal specific and could include warehousing, pick and pack, technology service, air or shipping line agency, or express services. The Specialist Services Award this year is supported by new sponsor, New Age Software and Solutions. And so the four finalists for the Specialist Services Award are B&H Worldwide Limited, Cargo Overseas Limited, Kerry Logistics, and Your Special Delivery Service Limited. Douglas. And the winner of this year's award is Your special delivery service. Please come up to the stage. Your special delivery service, or YSDS to their friends, showed innovation and dedication to the problem, working closely with the clients to offer an individual coordinate solution. With price points for different solutions, overall, the judges have felt that this was a good example of a consultative and collaborative solution. Okie dokie, here we go. Penultimate category here. Um, and this is the Staff Development Award. Uh, and to announce the award winner, please welcome onto the stage from Albacore Systems, it's Cliff Atkinson! FIFA members, whatever their size, Woo! comprehensive training programs to keep abreast of regular changes in regulations, industry practices, and general business matters. In this category, the judges wanted to understand how members encourage and develop all personnel to be their best and contribute to the success and direction of the business. The Staff Development Award, sponsored by Albacore Systems, is for companies that have implemented or are in the process of implementing a comprehensive staff training or education program. The four finalists for the Staff Development Award are Aramex UK Limited, Espas Europe Limited, Reliable Shipping Limited, and Unsworth UK. Over to you, Cliff. Sorry, 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 hold on a minute. <laughs> and the winner is Answorth UK. I can tell you the Unsworth table have gone crazy. 
good for you. The judges were impressed with the in-house customs clearance training offered by Unsworth, combined with the Udemy courses. Unsworth offer incentives to their staff to complete the courses by way of purchase. The Go the Extra Mile Award is an accolade where members of staff are voted for by colleagues for providing exceptional customer services. Congratulations, Unsworth UK. Righty ho, here we are with the final category award for today. Indeed. Ooh. Um, I would like to invite onto the stage Paul Richardson from Boxtop Technologies. Uh, he is going to come onto the stage uh, and announce the winner of this year's trophy for the Supply Chain Management Award. Thanks for joining us, Paul. The Supply Chain I'm Management Boxtop. Award, sponsored by Boxtop Technologies, is specifically aimed at companies that have worked with their customer to provide an innovative solution, enabling them to manage their supply chain more efficiently and cost-effectively. And so, the finalists for the Supply Chain Management Award are Brunel European, Hemisphere Freight Services Limited, Nuatum Logistics Limited, and Unisurf. Over to you, Paul. And the winner is Brunel European. <laughs> Brunel's proactive approach to the challenges posed post-Brexit helped them develop new solutions and services for their European road freight customers. Their investment in a bespoke IT solution has enabled them to expedite the clearance process for their groupage trailers and manage any duty and VAT payments in line with the relevant customs regimes. And so, congratulations to all the 11 winners here today. And before we return to Transay for the raffle draw, I will hand you back to Robert Keane, BIFA Director General. Give it up for Robert. Come on, here he is. Well, every now and then, I'll start again. Every now and then, we identify an outstanding individual who we think deserves recognition with a special award. We like to recognise volunteers who support the industry, our sector, and for the good of others. And today's recipient enjoyed a long and varied career in the world of international logistics. And although he's no longer moving freight, he ensures that those of you who do have the occasional fun day out. He's a devoted family man, active in the local community, who's given his time freely during the COVID-19 pandemic as part of a local volunteer team delivering hot meals to people living alone. However, many of you will recognise him for his tireless work at the London Freight Club as Honorary Secretary helping to raise thousands of pounds for charity every year from the logistics sector. So, my great pleasure to invite to the stage Gordon Day. I'm very honoured to get this, didn't have a clue, and it's something I love and enjoy doing. And anybody that wants to become a member, that are not a member of our club, please come and see me. Thank you.
Sorry, boss. Thank you, Robert. Big hand for our event host, Matt Dawson. Well-deserved award there for Gordon as well. Thank you very much. Just before we close the ceremony today, please welcome back Caroline Barber of TrainsAid to announce the raffle winners. If you're one of the lucky winners here this afternoon, please make yourself known to one of the TransAid personnel here today. Thank you very much. Right. So we've got four wonderful prizes. Um, the first is a one-day cookery course at Rick Stein's Cookery School, kindly donated by the Woodland Group. What we'll do is Matt kindly will draw out the winning envelope. If we can ask you to please stay in your seat, Matt will kindly read the table number and the name, and then my Transaid colleagues will come over to you, if that's OK. That's all right. Right. OK. Table eight. <laughs> Have not won. <laughs> I couldn't resist it. I couldn't resist it. I'm getting booed. OK, here we go. Table 24. Where are you? Table 24. Mike White on table 24. We'll come and find you, I think. We'll come and find you. Don't worry, don't worry. Thank you very much. These... Oh, it's so good if it's number eight now, though, isn't it? It's so good. Try our best. The second prize this afternoon is a classic golf day for two at Formby Hall Golf Resort and Spa. Mm. And that is kindly donated by the London Freight Club. Nice. Nice. Who wants this one? Who wants this one? I know Table 8 wants it. Who else wants it? All right, OK, yeah. Table 34! Table 34. And it's always oh, one of our winners, Matt Vick. What a night he's having. What a night. Wow. Congratulations, Matt. Get in there. And the third prize this afternoon, this is for a triple supercar thrill, and that is kindly donated by Bifa. A triple supercar thrill. Okay. Oh, this is going to be a very popular winner, uh, because it's Sharon Hammond from Table One. <laughs> the organiser of the event, all right? Listen, listen, she may well have been the person who was responsible for choosing me to come and do this award ceremony, but she's worked hard, she deserves, she deserves a thrill. She deserves a thrill. Well done, Sharon. A three-car thrill, Sharon, as well. I'll have you know. And the last prize this afternoon is for a one-night Scottish break with dinner for two, and that is donated by the Hedford Group. And this is... I, I'm, I, I'm, I promise you I'm not making the name up, all right? I'm not. I'm not. The, the name is A-Melt. <laughs> is that his name? A-Melt? Oh, A-Melt on. A-Melton. A-Melton on table four. Congratulations. Congratulations. Is it? Do you want me to do that? 
I think you should do that. You should be <laughs> incredibly proud of that. This is unbelievable news. Well, it's unbelievable generosity from all of you. This is a new BIFA record raised this afternoon for TransAid. That's £3,660. So thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Robert Keane. So, the end of the afternoon. I hope you've all had a good time so far. Normally, I do three things at this time, and we're not going to do them, because um, the first would always be to say, there's another function tonight, so please leave the hall as soon as you can. There's no function tonight, so stay as long as you like. Secondly, um, we would normally ask the winners to come back, but with COVID and crowding, we decided we're not going to do a big group photo. Um, is it? I must just thank, I nearly forgot to thank the sponsors. Uh, one thing we're proud of about our awards is they're uh, independently judged. Um, we get all the entries in, the sponsors get together, they decide who's going to win, and we keep it entirely neutral. Now, the last thing that we would normally do is we'd normally get all of the BIFA staff up on stage. There's a lot of work goes into doing this. Um, you'll probably seen the people around. They've got these name badges on like this. If you do see them, say well done. Um, we can't have them all on stage, but I'd like you all to give a big round of applause to my team who put this together. Thank you all for coming. That's it. Good night, folks. In the old days, I'd have jumped down, yeah.